Early 2000 gaming was probably the best. With a whole range of consoles and loads of single player based games, I always loved to play The Sims on PC, as a soft spot. But when I heard a Sims game was coming out for the Game Boy Advance, my love for The Sims grew stronger. Released in 2004, The Herb Sims in the City was released on PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube and Game Boy Advance. It was a sequel to The Sims Bustin' Out, which was released for the same consoles. In these games, you control the movement of your Sims with the D-pad. Select on the fridge to eat, select the toilet to pee, and select other Sims to converse with them. Whereas in the normal Sims 1 and Sims 2 for PC, you click on this and you tell your Sim to do that. That's pretty much the way it went. In the herbs, you had 100% control of their movement, and this was a breath of fresh air for the Sims. Where after creating your herb, by the way, herbs are more urbanized versions of Sims, you will be greeted by Chris Tissel, who long story short tells you your boss has disappeared, Sim Tower, where you worked and lived, was bought by Daddy Big Bucks, and you're fired, and being kicked out of the building. This story based game is broken into a set of goals, missions basically with chapters. The first set of goals teach you how to play the game, how to interact with other herbs, how to earn money through the mini games in order to survive, and how to build up your skills. Without spoiling the game too much, Daddy Big Bucks ends up getting you arrested and you go to jail. After befriending the local detective Dan Man, he tells you to get a new house and a job in Urbania. From there your journey begins and your end goal is to defeat Daddy Big Bucks and find your old boss, Harlem King. It's the basic, here's the bad guy, defeat him and win storyline, but it's good, real good for this game. When you create your herb, you answer a set of questions which will determine what group you fit into. When I say group, think of a gang but without the shootings. There's the streeties, the artists, the richies, and the nerdies. Whatever group you get into determines certain objectives throughout the game, but it's not too major, a fun feature actually. There are a plethora of different jobs, or mini games as they're called in this game, from basketball, to dirt bike racing, to being a stand-up comedian, to even fiddle battles out in the bayou. All of the eight different mini games have five levels to progress in them. In order to progress, you need to build up your skills, this is nice, because this is typical Sims fashion here. All your normal skills from the Sims are here, body, cooking, charisma, logic, creativity, and mechanical. Talking to other herbs or making friends is interesting in this game too. In PC Sims games you're stuck with this doing the same interaction over and over again, but in the herbs, each Sim responds to dialogue differently. One herb could love it when you talk about movies, other herbs could absolutely hate the fact that you're talking about movies. So there's actually a memory log you have to kind of learn what herbs likes and dislikes and as an eight year old I love this and I still do. You can even get herbs to move into your house and they'll be your roommate so you won't get lonely you'll have company and it splits your bills in half. You can travel to any of the shops to purchase furniture for your house or buy them online with a computer and wait for them to be delivered. I prefer the conventional way though of purchasing them in the store as between 5 p.m and 7 p.m each of the furniture stores have auctions on items. It's a really good way of getting items for cheaper. Oh, well, hopefully. Sometimes you can end up being outbidded by the other herbs contesting. There are six different houses, two in each sector of the game. Yes, yeah, sector. The map is split into four parts, with some side parts. You have Urbania, which is basically where the game starts. Then you have Simquarter and Salty's Boat. Then there's Glastown, which is more or less end game. And then there's the Bayou, which you will enter mid to late game, but this is the only place you won't be able to purchase a house in. But you can still use the Bio Brothers appliances in their house. Now, the thing about this game is since it's story based, the map isn't open all at once. You have to progress through the game and the storyline in order to open up the different parts of the map. The Carnival and Paradise Island are little small sectors as well, but you'll find them throughout the map as herbs tend to be in different locations on the map at different times and you'll kind of learn as you should go throughout the game where they'll be and when you need to find them. The cool thing is you'll never not be able to find an herb because you can ring them up on the phone and they'll basically more or less tell you where they are, if they're busy, sometimes they just won't answer but you will at different times find where they are. And the great thing is as you go through the different sectors of the map you'll see herbs hanging out in different places or in different buildings and it really gives that whole life to the game. And if you befriend certain herbs to 100%, you can unlock kind of hideouts. There are more living spaces around the map for you. 
You can live in the school bus in Urbania, the trash can in Glastown, even under sim quarter in a cave. In this game, the dialogue is different as I've, as I've said, but there is a popularity score. This is actually something very important to this game because it's story related too. You need to have certain popularity at certain times. Uh, 100% friendship with a sim gives you 3% popularity overall. So it adds to the story of kind of being, well, basically liked by sims and makes you feel part, well, they make you feel more part of the world that you're living in. There's so many herbs you're going to come across in this game that you'll just fall in love with their characters. Lincoln Broadsheet, Lottie Cash, Darius, Chris Thistle, uh, well, Daddy Big Bucks, but normally the aim of the game is not to like him. Detective Dan Man, Dusty Hogg, there's so many characters in this game. It's just hard not to love nearly all of them. What I always find captivating about this game, even when actually when I was younger and, and now, is you either created an alternative version yourself in this game, or just someone completely different. You got into one of the groups, and you kind of you kind of worked around that way. Now you can actually work with the other groups that you know. Some like okay, if you're a streety, the Richies are kind of against you. If you're a nerdy, uh, isn't it that artists don't like you or something? So it's kind of the real balance there is actually so cool. Um, but you kind of have to play around with this feature too, and like it still gets into the sense of the whole popularity thing. I remember here, like when I was when I was younger and playing this game, I was always more or less I was always a streety or an artist, but I was mainly always a streety. And I'd go around befriending some Richies, and then I realized, wait a minute, I'm not meant to be friends with these. I just learned this, fall out with them, and then I struggle with my popularity. There's so many cool places on the map as well. Like honest to God, like. Between like the, the, the motorbike shop, uh, the museum, you have a cafe where you can go in and you can actually do online shopping in there. There's cafes, there's places to buy food, there's the nightclub which is Club Easel, uh, you've got the jail, you got a hospital, all the places you can live. As I mentioned the carnival the carnival in Paradise Island. It's there's just so much going on in this place. The bayou, the bayou is so big, you have the cemetery which you can go through. Oh man, it's just so cool. Just from the story, the map itself, uh, the herbs, the, the, literally the characters in them and their characteristics, the way that they're in different locations at different times, the way that basic sim stuff is still in the game like skills and your needs, there's just it's just such an amazing game. There are so many ways to play this game in so many different ways. I loved this game when I was eight, and I'm gonna love this game when I'm eight. From even just going around to the map and like picking up trash piles and kind of role playing as a garbage man or environmentalist, or befriending as many herbs as you can to build up your popularity, just so you can get easels, so you could use those easels and basically buy things, perks, that can increase your, your needs or whatever way of playing the game. It's just so different. There was of course the whole thing of trying to learn what dialogues herbs liked. Some sims liked talking about TV, so others didn't. So trying to figure this all out and work out, okay, if I really want to build up my friendship with this sim, these are the things I like, these are the things they don't like. Like even when you worked on your rep group and, and completed their goals, as you progressed in your rep group, you'd get things sent in the mail when you went, in, when you went home. Even as well, there were so many different ways of traveling in this game. You could get the hoverboard at the start, and then eventually get the motorbike from Dusty Hog. Even the time machine and its easter eggs in it, like you could go back to the setting of The Sims Bust and Out Game Boy Advance version. The soundtrack to this game is absolutely outstanding. I still listen to this soundtrack to this day, it's that good for me. The only bad thing I have to say about this game is, I didn't like the time and how quick your popularity went down. Like it take two to three days to try and get everyone up to 100% but by the time you were working on your, your last people in your friendships the ones that you had on the first were slowly going down but this isn't really much of a big deal for the game. Max popularity is 80% after that it's not too much big of a deal. It's really my only con about the game. So with that being said I would rate this beautiful game a 9.5 out of 10. This game is a treasure. I'm going to love it. I'm always going to love it. It was escape for me uh, when I was younger. When I go back and play it now, it's still an escape. It just brings back too many good memories. For me, this is a Sims game masterpiece. 
Anyways, that is it for the review, guys. I did something different with the review. I like the style of it. There's going to be more coming. So stick around. I have a Let's Play of the Herbs, by the way, if you haven't watched it yet. I'll leave the link in the description below, and you'll see it on one of the cards. I don't know which way the cards are. The cards are going to be one of these ways. But it's going to be either way. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see you guys next time.